Finish him! Fatality! Hi there, I'm a film student and I'm going to give you my take on... We'll be diving into five categories and scoring each of them out of ten. Total them up and that's the film's overall score. I want to say I'm a massive Mortal Kombat fan. It's one of the first games I've ever played, so this video will be super fun, but don't worry, I won't be biased. Now, let's slide into the story. Okay, so, we begin with Hanzo Hisashi's backstory as Bihan unalives him and his family. We then meet our protagonist, Cole Young, a fading MMA fighter who soon discovers he's been chosen for a tournament known as Mortal Kombat, where Earth's warriors battle against Outworld to determine the fate of the realms. Cole meets Special Forces Sonya Blade and Jax Briggs, and Jax has a score to settle with Sub-Zero that doesn't go his way. They seek out Raiden, the Thunder God and protector of Earthrealm who helps them unlock their abilities for the tournament. Meanwhile, sorcerer Shang Tsung, the leader of Outworld's forces, sends his deadliest warriors to eliminate the team. As the characters train, Jax gets new arms, Cole discovers more about his family tree, and Kano here faces a move spammer. That the only move you know, mate. Finally, Cole discovers he is really a descendant of Scorpion. Not only this, but Scorpion comes back from the dead to help save Cole from his nemesis Sub-Zero. The final fight ends with Scorpion and Cole defeating the ninja and saving Earthrealm for now. Now, I want to begin by getting some personal issues out of the way. Firstly, I'm not a massive fan of the new character Cole. I don't think he really fits in the universe. Also, a pretty big thing, but the script sucked. It was full of cliches and was so corny. Also, they kill off the man Reptile. Anyway, I liked how they introduced the world of Mortal Kombat. This film did super well when it comes to the world building and building up an atmosphere. But when it came to character development, it fell massively short. Lots of the characters felt pretty 2D. Finally, I want to say the opening scene was easily the best part of the film. But director Sam McCoy directed that in his own vision before Warner Brothers stepped in and told him to do the rest of the film differently. Warner were also the ones that said they needed Cole, which again, really sucks. Anyway, for the story, it hurts to say, but it deserves a 3 out of 10. So Lewis Tank gives a solid performance as Cole Young, showing a good blend of determination and vulnerability. I, I do feel the attempt at trying to make a relatable everyman wasn't super successful though. I sadly think that Tan's acting gave the film a bit of an MCU feel, which I assume is a Warner Bros thing. Joe Taslin's portrayal of Sub-Zero is crazy, capturing the iconic character with chilling precision. His presence and martial arts made him a properly menacing bad guy. Speaking of which, Hiroyuki Sanada's portrayal of Scorpion is my favourite part of the film. He brings depth and gravitas to the character. His performance gives Scorpion such a sense of tragedy. Sonata shows the emotional side to the character perfectly too. Also, I want to praise his martial arts too. Apart from these two, a vast majority of the side characters felt so over the top in their acting, and it really kind of pulls you out of it. It's like watching kids pretend to be ninjas rather than actual fighters. Saying this though, Sonata and Tazlin did somewhat carry the performance. So I'm giving the performance a deserved 6 out of 10. Mortal Kombat films were never known for their great acting anyway. Apart from Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa, his performance was just mind-blowing. Your soul is mine. This film gives us some great dynamic camera work, especially in the fight scenes. It captures the intensity and fluidity of the choreography. Close-up shots and sweeping movements keep our adrenaline high the entire time. I feel like the colours in this film, however, are a little too brownish for me, but this is pure opinion, as I've always loved Mortal Kombat being more colourful than dingy. The framing is done decently, with a good mix of establishing shots and emotional close-ups. Does it fall into the cliché with it, though? Sometimes, yeah. Also, I want to say, something all games do is drastically change the kind of lighting depending on what realm they're in. I like how this film stays loyal to that too. I know I've talked positively about it, but the cinematography only gets a 5 from me. Let's start on a high note. The film's score, composed by Benjamin Wolfish, is phenomenal. The beautiful orchestral pieces massively enhance the tense, emotional scenes, even in the fight scenes. It just immerses us a ton. Wolfish also, in my opinion, does the Techno Syndrome theme justice with an even more techno sounding revamp to it. God, this is one of my favourite things about the film, honestly. Also, I hope I'm not done for copyright, but just listen to this scene. Get over here! The sound effects are dynamic and impactful, adding proper weight to the fights. From bone crunching punches and kicks to the explosive booms of the elemental powers, the sound effects make the fight scenes so visceral. I love it. Granted, there were a couple instances where the effects were a little too unrealistic and cartoony, but what was happening on the screen kind of made up for it. Ooh, also, the film utilizes spatial audio, which is when the sound is programmed to come at you from different directions. If you want an example, listen to Bohemian Rhapsody with your headphones in. 
This technique creates a new level of immersion, allowing audiences to feel like they're right in the middle of the combat. Another small gripe, I personally found that the character themes weren't as oomphy as the rest of the score was, and that being a large part of the film, I'll have to mark it down pretty harshly for that thing. Overall, the sound was a blend of iconic and emotional music with, and let me know if I'm being harsh, often cartoony sound effects. And for a fair portion of the film, the score just didn't do much for me because of the character themes. So sound for me gets a five out of 10. So the film's editing is all right. It paces the action and maintains the flow of the story. And while it contributes to the intensity of the fight scenes, there are points where pacing could be tightened a bit to enhance the impact of a fair few scenes. Also, the scene where Sub-Zero first attacks and ice rains down was done practically, which I think is absolutely awesome and it definitely paid off. Special effects supervisor Peter Stubbs even made an ice cut to shoot out the hail. The visual effects in Mortal Kombat are, for the most part, impressive. While some VFX sequences are breathtaking, there are some moments where the effects feel slightly less polished. Like with Liu Kang's fire, Kano's laser, or Cabal's speed? It just didn't look realistic to me at all. The VFX does seamlessly integrate, however, with the practical stunts and choreography. It makes the action scenes feel way cooler, especially the Scorpion vs. Sub-Zero fight. Overall, the film's editing and VFX contribute to the immersive and action-packed experience. I'm going to give it a solid 7 out of 10. Before we unveil the total score, I want to say, please comment below what aspects you enjoyed and what you didn't find as entertaining, and let me know. What did I miss? To conclude, the final score for Mortal Kombat 2021 is... 26! I hope you have a wonderful and productive day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye!